For 25 years, they were supposed to be the agency that looked out for the consumer, the group that would make sure that we weren't getting ripped off. Now, a senior manager of the Utility Consumers Action Network, known as UCAN, is accused of taking illegal bonuses and keeping secret bank accounts. Last week, UCAN was served with a federal subpoena. Also this week, more financial trouble at San Diego schools, and it looks like a showdown between the school board and the union. Joining me to talk about the week's top stories, Jeff McDonald, investigative reporter at UT San Diego, and David Rollin, editor at San Diego City Beat. Thanks for being here. Sure. Jeff, bring us up to speed. What is UCAN accused of, and how did this come to light? Uh, this came to light last uh, earlier this week after UCAN, uh, the board of directors, decided to file a dissolution request in San Diego Superior Court. Uh, they characterized this in a media advisory as a protective defensive measure against threatened lawsuits and cash flow problems, um, but it also underscored a uh, federal investigation that we learned about at the same time. Uh, the FBI apparently has been looking into UCAN finances, transactions, and bank accounts uh, for some months. And uh, the chairman of the board is ordered to appear in federal court next week with uh, a whole wheelbarrow full of records. Now, let's throw into this story a couple of whistleblowers, or so-called whistleblowers. It gets even more complicated and interesting. Uh, but we had them on our show earlier this week, two employees with UCAN who told us that they were concerned about what was going on with money. Um, they went to the board privately. The board didn't respond and then got themselves a lawyer, Mike Aguirre. So what happened next? Well, the board did respond, uh, according to all sides. They hired an investigator who looked into the allegations and found no merit to them. Uh, the two employees uh, don't feel like the investigation was as thorough or extensive as it needed to be, and that they didn't look at other evidence that subsequently was reported to uh, the board members. So they don't consider the investigation to be uh, worthwhile. Uh, so that prompted their approaching Mr. Aguirre, who has since uh, negotiated privately with the board members to try and resolve some of the issues he considers extremely important to the good governance of the organization. Uh, and that hasn't satisfied uh, either the employees or Mr. Aguirre. And I think what's at play here, right, David, are, are some personalities. So Mike Aguirre, former city attorney, and then also Michael Shames, which you talked to him at length yesterday. Yes, uh, Michael Shames uh, is well known uh, all over San Diego, and especially to reporters. He he works very well with, with the media in town and has been doing it for almost 30 years uh, in his various battles against utilities uh, in this city. Uh, He's affable. He's uh, fun to talk to. He's a really nice guy. And it's almost kind of like, and I have personally uh, a great admiration for, for the work that he's done. So when you hear this news, it's almost like a say it isn't so kind of thing. And personally, you know, I kind of, I'm pulling for the guy because uh, I'd, hate to, I'd hate to think that he did anything wrong, particularly, you know, for him, uh, for one thing, but particularly for uh, the consumers in San Diego. Uh, if, if we lose you can, there's a huge hole, um, you know, in the defense of, of ratepayers in the city. I want to and talk more about that, but I, want to, I also want to toss to um, a Facebook comment from Michael Shames that he posted, I believe, last night. Um, what he says, fears about UCAN's imminent demise are, as Twain would have said, greatly exaggerated. Here's the real scoop. Mike Aguirre has been terrorizing the UCAN board for the better part of a year with all nature of threats about impending legal action for everything and anything he can imagine. The UCAN board finally reached the end of its patience and is now forcing Aguirre to come public with whatever imagined claims he has about UCAN through a petition of dissolution, dissolution process. We're pretty sure he has nothing, but he now has 30 days to put up or shut up. It's fair to say that Aguirre and I have a long-standing, we have a long-standing memberships to the same mutual distaste, distaste society. This time it is very personal. Is that part of this? Is this a personal fight? Well, Michael Shames says it is, uh, and he would not be the first person to ever say that Mike Aguirre is waging a terror campaign. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, he would probably even admit that he's a bit of a bull in a china shop. Uh, he comes charging in, uh, and he takes no prisoners, uh, and he has a real style about him. Um, and uh, certainly other folks have said, uh, you know, to me over the years during his tenure as city attorney that, uh, that he can be volatile and vindictive and all these other things. But, hey, maybe he's got something here, uh, and we won't know until it all shakes out. 
So, Jeff, what will happen now with these big cases? We've got the SDG&E um, case with the wildfires. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got water. What's going to happen? Those cases will persist uh, at the PUC level. The question is how effective and whether UCAN will continue to press the ratepayers' case. Uh, Mr. Shames has said he'll continue to do the work, whether it's uh, with UCAN or some uh, new organization that may shake out at the end of uh, at the end of this process. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. I want to move on to the week's other big story. So the must read this week: City Beats cover story on the finances of San Diego Unified School District. I'll give you the first line: Scott Barnett is considering the nuclear option. Now, Scott Burnett is the school trustee, and I will leave it up to David Rowland, the author of that line, to tell us what the nuclear option is. David, take it away. Actually, the nuclear option, those were my words. His word, a little later in the, uh, in the story, in a direct quote, was Armageddon. So uh, Armageddon was probably a better, a more exciting term. And, and what he means by that is deciding not to lay off um, 1,100, 1,200 employees uh, and instead purposefully run the district out of money. And what would happen if, 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 that, ha if that occurred, uh, this, the, the district essentially would throw up his hand, its hands, raise the white flag and say, we have failed to balance this budget. We're in serious trouble. We can't pay our bills. So then what would happen was the, uh, the state would send in a, a trustee to take over the district, probably get uh, state lo loans um, of, of some kind, of some amount, uh, to keep the district afloat. Uh, it's important to note that, that, that they don't have to do that. Insolvency is, is not required here. The reason for that is that the school board has a proposed budget. And it, but it, the problem is in order to, to balance the budget, its proposal is to lay off as many uh, employees as I was just saying, plus sell off $21 million worth of real estate assets that the school district owns. So there is no, I called the story, the, you know, basically a lose-lose situation. There is no good option here. This is why I liked your story. We know that budgets are about choices, and you lay out the choices for us. It's right, and, and, and may, I don't know if they're false choices, but often they're layoffs, bigger class sizes, um, or do, you know, do teachers make concessions? You know, these are all the things that could happen, or this final choice is run out of money. Is this really becoming a showdown between the union, who, who in your story says we don't know if they're out of money, and and the school board? Is this what you? How it certainly you appears to be. Uh, you can understand the union point of view, not wanting to give up hard-won concessions. They did make a bunch of concessions uh, over the last couple of years. They're now waiting to um, capitalize on the benefits they were promised two years ago. Uh, so it is a uh, uh, a going question as to whether. The union will agree to postpone those raises they were promised in light of uh, keeping class sizes where they are. Now, you had a story today, too, uh, concerning the union and concessions, or not concessions, but health care costs. Tell us about yes, that. Yes, the district spends a lot of money uh, delivering health care services to its employees, uh, about $170 million this year. Uh, they spend that money through a trust, and the uh, the trust in question, the, the, the district's relationship with the trust, it's, it has an exclusive deal with the trust uh, called VEBA that, they, uh, that they've enjoyed for 20 years. Uh, what some people would like to do is put that agreement out to competitive bid. Uh, at least one competitor said they could deliver the same level of service for uh, $10 million a year less, which would free up money to put back into classrooms and teacher salaries. So, David, I know in your story you pointed out, and there's been other, there have been other media reports about the union um, really not, not willing to come to the table so much. Is th so do you think Scott Barnett sort of saying, okay, insolvency, is this a chess move? Is this a threat? Is this sort of taunting the union, or what, what's that all about? Yes, I, I would say it is. Uh, as I said, uh, the district does not have to go insolvent. They have a plan to lay off all these people and sell off a bunch of real estate. Um, that would balance the budget. And we're talking about $122 million for the upcoming school year, which is, which is about 18% of their discretionary budget. So it's a big, But big is it hole. really an option if you're going to end up with classrooms that are, you know, 40 kids, 50 kids? It, is that a real option? That's Scott Barnett's point. He's saying, which is worse? Um, you know, saying we can't handle it anymore. This problem's too big and we can't get along with the unions. We can't come to an agreement. Or uh, laying off all these people and really degrading the quality of education. Um, you know, Bill Freeman, who's the president of the uh, teachers union, said 
Look, the big problem here is we are budgeting in the dark. We don't know what the state's budget is yet. That's what this is all about. The state doesn't come up with its budget until May, June, in that time. Unfortunately, by state law, the districts have to send out a bunch of pink slips to teachers that they might lay off later if they feel like they have to. And Bill Freeman says, look, we'd rather not have to uh, make concessions now before we even know what the state's budget is. Well, we're definitely going to have to follow this story. David Rowland and Jeff McDonald, thank you both for being here. Thank mm -hmm. you.